in the inflorescence today we will see about uh, special types of uh, inflorescence it is actually mixed type of inflorescence where inflorescence is partly racemose and partly cymose there are three special types of the inflorescence first one is a vertex cluster second one is a cyathium and third one is a hypanthodium just see one by one first one is a vertex cluster type of a inflorescence vertex cluster type of inflorescence is a characteristic feature of family or lamiaceae so it is a complex type of inflorescence inflorescence axis bears opposite leaves inflorescence axis that means peduncle bear opposite leaves and flower flowers develop in the axil of the leaves so on the peduncle opposite type of leaves are present and in the axil of leaves flowers develop each inflorescence is a dicasial uh, and is reduced to two scorpoid cymes on two sides just see here this one is a vertex cluster type of inflorescence this is actually what called the peduncle these are the leaves which are present in opposite phyllotaxy and in the axil of this uh, leaf such a type of a flowers are present so this is typical characteristic of a vertex cluster type of inflorescence see here this is a peduncle okay and uh, on this peduncle the flowers are produced oppositely in the axil of the leaf just see about the arrangement of flowers so the main axis ends in a flower so this one becomes the first flower later on it produces dicasial condition okay as you already observe, already studied what is dicasial type of inflorescence the first one flower and laterally if it produces two flowers then this one is called as a dicasial condition later on it produces scorpoid monocasial sign so first one condition is a dicasial condition and second one condition is a monocasial and in a monocasial scorpoid sign type of inflorescence is present what is scorpoid sign in monocasial main axis ends in a flower laterally it produces lateral branch which again ends in a flower so this becomes the first flower this is the second flower it again produces third flower on third fourth will be produced on fourth fifth will be produced okay so here flowers are produced to the left and uh, right if you see here this is uh this one is flower which is produced to the right side left side right side left side okay again uh, uh, right side and again left side so flowers are produced in a zigzag manner so here main axis ends in a flower this is the first flower it shows dicasial condition so these are the second number flower which produces dicasial condition later on it produces scorpoid sign this is third flower this one is produced to the left side and this one is the fourth flower which is produced on its right side if you see here this one becomes the third flower and this one becomes the fourth flower such a type of flowers are produced on both sides so if you see here this one becomes the first flower this is forms the uh, this will produce the dicasial condition first and uh, these two lateral flowers 
then third flower fourth flower scorpoid condition this one becomes the third flower and fourth flower so such a type of a arrangement is present in vertis celaster type of inflorescence this part is generally considered as a verticel and uh, from this verticel the name vertis celaster is given to the inflorescence so this one is a complex type of inflorescence inflorescence axis produces opposite leaves and in the axil of the leaves flowers are produced each inflorescence is a dicasial sign which is reduced to scorpoid sign on both sides flowers are sessile and arranged in a cluster around the axis forming a false hole and this false hole is called as a verticel and hence the name is a verticel aster as uh, as you see here here actually the flowers are shown pediceled but this is only for our understanding flowers in verticel aster are sessile okay so flowers are sessile and arranged in a cluster around the axis which forms the verticel and hence the name given verticel aster and is a characteristic feature of family lamiaceae or labiate best example is a osimum or leucus aspera second one type of inflorescence is a cyathium type of inflorescence okay what is cyathium type of inflorescence if you see here this inflorescence this one figure represent the cyathium type of inflorescence and uh, this one also represent the cyathium type of inflorescence what is cyathium type of inflorescence the best one uh, the uh, important one character if you see here here centrifugal type of a succession is present okay what is centrifugal type of succession the maturity of flowers start from center to periphery in other words central flowers are older one while the peripheral flowers are younger one if you see here this one flower okay let me show you this flower which is present in the center is a oldest flower and is a female flower and this female flower is surrounded by means of the male flowers in a centrifugal manner if you see this one is a old flower this one is old flower this one becomes the young flower so old flowers are present in the center while younger flowers are present towards the periphery one more thing this inflorescence is enclosed by means of the cup shape in volucca okay so it is a specialized type of inflorescence cymose kind of inflorescence specialized cymose which is covered by means of cup shaped green involucres which is formed by the union of the bracts so number of bracts unites together comes together and forms such a type of a cup shaped bract okay so this cup shaped bract encloses the central flower which is a female flower just see here at the center biggest single female flower is present and this single female flower is surrounded by means of number of young male flowers each male flower is represented by single stamen okay here if you see single stamen the anther filament and the part of connective is a stamen so each male flower is represented by means of such a type of a single stamen each floret 
मेल फ्लोरेट हैज इट्स स्टॉक दिस वन फेलामेंट फेलामेंट बिकम्स द स्टॉक आराइजिंग इन द एक्जिल ऑफ थीन एंड स्केली ब्रैक्टेल्स सो एट द बेस ऑफ दिस स्टैमिन और सिंगल फ्लावर सच अ टाइप ऑफ ए ब्रैक्ट्स और ब्रैक्टेल्स आर एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट नेक्टर gland is also present on the involucre example is a euphorbia and characteristic feature of family euphorbiaceae just see here uh, this one figure so this one becomes the nectar uh, involucral okay see here this becomes the part of a cup shaped involucre okay so this becomes the cup shaped involucre which is formed by means of the union of the bracts okay so this is a cup shaped involucre in the center you will observe the female flower which is female flower just see here this one becomes the female flower and this female flower is present in the center so this becomes the female flower and again this female flower is surrounded by means of number of male flowers see these are the male flowers okay so here these are the male flowers this one becomes the female flower if you see here the mode of arrangement of these flowers okay oh just see this one the older flowers are present towards the center while the younger flowers are present towards the periphery this one part of the inflorescence let me show you uh, which one that part this one this one is the part which is present on the cup shape uh, cup shaped involucre bag these are called as a nectar secreting glands so this is a cyathium type of inflorescence which is a characteristic feature of family euphorbiaceae and uh, last one type special type of inflorescence is a hypanthodium type of inflorescence hypanthodium type of inflorescence is a characteristic feature of family moraceae okay so in moraceae you will observe hypanthodium type of a inflorescence what is present in this type of inflorescence in uh, in this type of inflorescence the receptacle that means axis of the inflorescence forms a hollow cavity a empty cavity with an apical opening which is called as a ostiole so here this inflorescence forms such a type of a hollow cavity which is a hollow cavity let me show you this one part which is present inside this is called as a hollow cavity and this hollow cavity has a apical opening and this opening is called as a ostiole this ostiole is guarded by number of such a type of a scales okay these scales protect the inner flowers from the natural calamity so these are the scales which are present at the place of opening or ostiole on the inner side here such a type of a flowers are present usually male flowers are present towards the apex region female flowers are present towards the basal region while in the central region some sterile flowers are present uh, or neutral flowers are present and they are generally considered as a gall flowers if you see here such a type of a male flowers are present towards the upper region and such type of female flowers are present towards the lower region uh, if you see this one 
this is a hypanthodium type of inflorescence okay uh, minute opening then this minute opening is called as the ostiole and uh, here scales will be present as a guarding one female flowers are present towards the lower side uh, male flowers are present towards the upper side and uh, neutral or gall flowers are present in the center okay uh, this one figure represent the cyathem type of inflorescence and uh, if you see ficus banyan um, fig uh, fruits actually these fruits are nothing but the inflorescence and that type of inflorescence is called as a hypanthodium type of a inflorescence just see here what is the hypanthodium type of inflorescence what is given here in this type of inflorescence receptacle forms the hollow cavity okay with apical opening which is called as a ostiole and is guarded by means of number of scales flowers are born on inner wall of the cavity okay and the, the flowers are unisexual male flowers towards the apex female flowers towards the base while middle portion is occupied by means of sterile flowers and the sterile flowers are called as a gall flowers ficus carica ficus glomerata ficus bengalensis ficus religiosa these are the examples of the hypanthodium type of a inflorescence and particularly they are present in family moraceae just see what are the significance of the inflorescence the first one significance of inflorescence is uh, to serve as a taxonomic character what is taxonomy uh, what are the points considered in the taxonomy identification classification and nomenclature these are the points which are uh, generally considered in a taxonomy so in taxonomy certain type of inflorescence is a characteristic feature of particular family example if you see the family lamiaceae verticillate type of inflorescence present family umbelliferi or apc umbel type of inflorescence present family mimosae uh, globose head or capitate type of inflorescence family uh, moraceae uh hypanthodium type of inflorescence astraceae family capitulum type of a inflorescence so particular type of inflorescence is present in particular type of a family second one significance grouping of flowers into an attractive structure of course inflorescence is nothing but the group of a flowers so number of flowers are grouped together and forms an attractive structure and this attractive structure is helpful to attract the pollinating agents okay uh, especially when the inflorescence uh, when the pollination takes place by means of the insects next one significance many flowers are pollinated together in a single visi by the pollinating agent okay as inflorescence is a group of a flowers so in a single visit of the pollinating agent number of flowers get pollinated which save the energy and time and uh, of course it increases the efficiency of pollination in inflorescence usually younger flower open rather late than the older flower okay if you see the acropetal type of succession or basipetal type of succession here younger and older flowers are present these younger flowers open late than the older flower this makes the flowering period longer okay and it provides better opportunities for cross pollination fertilization as well as seed production next one uh, significance this longer flowering uh, flowering period also help 
to avoid sudden damage of all flowers due to any natural calamity it may be the uh, that natural calamity may be the drought condition may be any diseased condition or maybe the rainfall or snowfall whatever it may be but the sudden damage of all flowers is uh, stopped by or in uh, it is stopped by means of this longer flowering period which occur in the inflorescence inflorescence usually complements the shape or any other feature to the pollinating agents actually the inflorescence provides the site or sitting arrangement to the pollinating agents which act the pollination uh, which act the pollination easier or pollination process so it provides the site for the pollination the type of inflorescence is very crucial in uh, hybridization program it decides methodology for the cross pollination which type of uh, method used in a cross pollination is decided by means of the type of the inflorescence and uh, last one the type of inflorescence is in a particular family will help to indicate primitive or advanced nature of that family okay so if you see the verticillaster type of inflorescence is a advanced one and is present in family labiate which is considered as a advanced family globose head or capitulum kind of inflorescence which are present in family asteraceae it again provide the advanced ness of that asteraceae family catkin type of inflorescence which is present in uh, primitive families okay so catkin or amentum type of inflorescence is a primitive one and it is present in a primitive type of a families so this is about the significance of the inflorescence and uh, special types of the inflorescence i hope you might have understood uh, the complete inflorescence in uh, these 3 to 4 videos so thanks see you in the next video of flower till then goodbye